I wanted us to share with the users about our first Aspire. Um, so we went to Miami, to the Miami Convention Center. Uh, a friend of ours, Dan Fleischman, is a co-owner of the Aspire Tour. Um, if you're interested, uh, you can go to AspireTour.com and look up some of the upcoming events that may or may, that may be in your area. I think the next one is on the 16th. In Orlando, right? Yeah, 16th of June in Orlando. But it's an awesome tour. It's a personal growth and business seminar with some of the most amazing speakers. Um, people like Tim Story and Marcus Limonis, David Goggins, and of course, um, the three owners are always there um, sharing their their anecdotes and stories about their sort of journey in the entrepreneurial game. Andrew Cordell, Dan Fleischman, and... Um, Eddie Wilson. Eddie Wilson, that's right. So um, definitely check it out. Again, it's uh, AspireTour.com. Um, highly suggest, I think we got a lot of value from it. Um, there are different types of tickets you can buy, and I think if you are interested in getting the most out of the event, um, definitely get those VIP tickets. So um, unpaid promotion. We are not being paid to endorse Aspire, but I think it was an amazing event. Um, it was obviously our first personal growth seminar that we've ever been to. Second. Uh, limitless. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So yeah, we, we went spent to- a few days in Salt Lake City getting a tour of the city, but also checking out Limitless event, which is the Keaton, who is the muscle, right? Right. Yeah. His event with Dan Fleischman. Yeah. And that was our very first foray into this personal growth. Um, You're absolutely right. Aspirational business seminar. And we got to see a lot of interesting speakers from Dan, uh, Dean Graziosi uh, to Keaton Hoskins, um, all the way up to David Goggins, who kind of closed the show with uh, an interview by Lewis Howes. Right. Yeah, it was amazing. And that was incredible. So I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. I know how much you love uh, me putting you on the spot in the I hot seat. Um, so explain to our viewers, what's the difference in what you get by attending Limitless in Salt Lake versus what you might um, take in, encounter, download from an Aspire tour event? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting comparison. I think Limitless is incredible, um, but I would say that it's akin to your local taco shop and comparing that to Chipotle, right? Aspire is just a corporate monstrosity with enormous resources behind it, um, that is able to get itself right out to 12 different cities throughout the year, right? Limitless so far, I think it's going to be more than once a year event, but so far they've only had two limitless events. Mm -hmm. Whereas Aspire has, you know, probably 20 or 30 shows under its belt. Yeah. And that shows, I mean, it's, it's incredible, right? You have 3000 people in attendance at the Miami convention center. And I think the split is something like, 50-50 50-50 between aspiring business owners and current business owners. Okay. So great feedback. What was the most notable difference that you saw in audience attendance, demographically speaking, between those who attended Limitless? And if you don't know this answer, I'll answer. But those who attended Limitless versus those who attended Aspire. Because yeah. there was one glaring difference. Yeah, I think, I think we saw like one enormous difference. And the enormous difference was the percentage of women Bingo. in the audience. Bingo. And that could be a Miami thing. Because right? there's more women in Miami or something. Because Miami is such a health conscious, fitness conscious town, mm-hmm. the types of business owners that you find uh, are probably in industries such as food service, healthcare, med spas, gyms. And I think there's a higher tendency for female entrepreneurship in those okay. industries. Okay. Uh, whereas Salt Lake City may just not have that mix. Okay. I will give you my perspective. I hear what you're saying, health and beauty, right? That type of thing in Miami. I think it has to do with what Aspire or who Aspire markets to. So I think Aspire is a thematically is a very real estate focused seminar. And I think an overwhelmingly large majority of active real estate agents in America are women. Hmm. And so I think, again, thematically, the topics that are brought up 
at the Aspire Tour events are centered around, yes, entrepreneurship, 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 excuse me. But I think if you noticed, more and more of the speakers are talking about their the inception of their entrepreneurial journey and the the development of that journey through the context or lens of real estate, be it commercial or residential. And so I think who did you hear talk about that? Um at Aspire. Yeah. Andrew Some talked about in. yeah, Andrew talked about real estate. Eddie talked about real estate. Um um I forget. I forget exactly who spoke, you know, most notably about real estate, but I just remembered that, and and maybe this dovetails nicely with what I wanted to focus on today, which is like, okay, well, how does Aspire make money? And so when Eddie was on stage, because he was on stage twice, 40 minutes each, so 180 minutes out of a, I don't know how long that day was, was that 10 hours maybe, that Aspire tour event? Yeah, it sounds right. Maybe longer. It seems like a loss leader in terms of the ticket sales. So you show up to this large convention center, in this case was the Miami Convention Center, and it really just, I mean, it looks like any other, you know, sort of speaking event that you may attend, be it a legal event or something like that, even like, a, you know, just imagine a, a medical event or something for um, for doctors and nurses. And everyone's sitting on folding chairs, right, in the audience. In this case, it was about 3,000 people, over 3,000 people. And you're like, well, how much did these people pay to attend? And I think the reality is a lot of people paid $100 to be there. Some, or zero. Right? Some no. may even got, have, have, have received tickets for free. So then the question is, what, not what value they get, but how does the Aspire Tour monetize the butts in the seats? And if you noticed, there were additional seminars that they would upsell people on in subsequent days. Um, and Lots those, of them. Yeah. And those right. events were centered around real estate. Is that right? So the money is mastermind to center around real estate? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I think for so many real estate agents out there, and th this, is, this is my perspective, again, do not read too much into this. I think a lot of real estate agents out there are twiddling their thumbs, especially like, you know, um, seller's agents. Yeah. As, as our mortgage brokers. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're looking for something to do. And I think, you know, unfortunately at this event, Pace Morby wasn't there, but of course he's got his sub two movement, right. Combined with the Gator method. And if you're not familiar with those, uh, if you're not familiar with Pace Morby, I encourage you to check him out online. Um, you can go to his website, you can go to his Instagram, which is just at Pace Morby. But, um, in this market, right, where, um, where there's such a decline in, you know, residential inventory, right? Nobody's selling their home. So it's like, well, what is a real estate agent to do? And I think that's what, that, that's the sort of insight that you can get from these Aspire events. Um, and specifically, most notably, going back to my, um, my example of Pace Morby, it's like, He's giving you a, a whole host of strategies as it relates to finding real estate opportunities that are off market, right? How to approach those who aren't necessarily selling their properties, be it residential or commercial, and creating supply where there wasn't any before. <laughs> I think it's well said, right? But you create the supply. That's one thing. So you approach someone, you're like, hey, would you be interested in, in selling your property? And so everybody's like, well, at what price? Sure. And what Pace Morby obviously sells is I'll give you the exact number that you want. No credit check, no money down, no real estate license. Um, and again... I'll, you can sub like this whole sub two movement, you can subject to, right, your property. I will be responsible, right, for covering the, the, the debt service. Just to be clear, when you say no credit check, uh, no licenses, 
That's for pace. <laughs> he doesn't have to have a credit check. Well, no, he doesn't but, have to provide any no, cash but, up front right, or but it's for like his that. community, right? It's for yeah. his community. So the people that are that are um, a part of his sub two movement, right. the sub two movement teaches how to find right these off market opportunities. And then if you need to put money down to satisfy the interests of the seller to a certain extent so that there's money in hand, right, in that exchange, um, the Gator method, right, is a, it seems like it's a community, right, of real estate investors that are willing to give you a loan for earnest money deposits. And um, I think it's invaluable. I think that's amazing. And I think to the extent that going back to the Aspire thing, which is, to the extent that you're a real estate agent and you're kind of sitting on your thumbs, you don't know what to do, attend one of these events, right? And learn from these real estate masters uh, how to create opportunities when there are seemingly none, right? So, you know. But going back to the event itself, the level of speakers was truly incredible, right? When you have Alex Rodriguez and Marcus Lemonis in front of you, you can't help but feel inspired. And oh. no matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're in real estate or you're opening a, a warehouse. And the way that Marcus is able to engage the audience by hopping off the stage and walking the aisles and actually drawing just regular people from the audience up and talking to them mm -hmm. like a human being, um, I think adds tremendous, tremendous value. And a little bit of a differentiator between what we saw at Limitless in Salt Lake City versus Aspire in Miami. Okay. Um, the the level of of speaker is a little bit different. Yeah, it was. You had a more, I mean, just in general, right? The event, and this is not to say anything negative about Limitless. I thought Limitless no. was amazing, but the like the level of production that went into the Aspire tour was just it was uncanny. It was just uncanny. It was so polished, so well produced. It seemed like it was both a TV show and one of the best events ever put on. And I think that is the byproduct of hiring best of breed, right? For all categories as it relates to the production of this event, right? From both ticket sales, um, from AV, from speakers, MCs. I mean, it was just, it, it was an emotional and I mean, it was just dopamine rush after dopamine rush after dopamine rush. Um, it kept you in your seats. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Having seen this rock concert. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Would you start your own? Huh. Knowing what you <laughs> know now. As, so like, would I invest in one is what you're asking? Sure. Um, no. Why? Tell I wouldn't why. invest in a type of tour or convention, um, because I know too much. <laughs> dangerous to know too much. Yeah. It's dangerous to know too much. Yeah. I know too much about how hard it is to monetize those seats. So I think what you'll see with Aspire tour as it, you know, cause it's a young tour. I think as it matures and gets more events under its belt, they'll get increasingly better, right, in subsequent Aspire Tour events with monetizing those seats. I think a lot of it has to do with, because you and I have been in the trade show slash convention game, right? We don't really talk about this, but we've been in that game for 20 years, right? Dean and I have probably attended hundreds of conventions and um, trade shows. Um, across I remember seeing... Uh Mike Tyson walking through the Vision Expo for optometrists yeah. uh, and ophthalmologists. So we're no stranger <laughs> in, in Las Vegas. We're no stranger no. to these tours and conventions hiring keynote speakers and overspending, right, in order to sell tickets. But I think what we've learned is that overspending on keynote speakers is a pitfall, it's a danger, it's a booby trap if you don't know how to monetize the butts and the seats. I think to the extent that you can use those people to sell tickets is fantastic. It's phenomenal. And as you're appealing to people on social media to try to entice them to buy tickets, having those high profile names 
Mike Tyson, um, Limonis, um, Tim Story, et cetera, et cetera, Goggins even. Sure, okay, I'll buy a ticket. That's interesting. It's in my city, right? But then when you have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these keynote speakers, you have to make up that money. And this is a great segue into the next day, which is us attending the 100 million mastermind that Dan Fleischman put together. Okay. That event is bar none, one of the best events I've ever been to. And that's how you monitor. Yes, yes, yes. 3,000 butts in the seats. Yes. Dan is, so Dan is, an, is, is a magician, right? He is a magician in so like, many ways. Mentally. Yeah. He's the mentalist. Yeah. Um, you know, and for those of you who don't know, you can check him out at Dan Fleischman. Um, on Instagram, on TikTok, any social media platform. He's one of the most, I, I think, he, just to give you a little bit of background on Dan, he's the youngest founder and CEO to ever take a company public. Um, but he's also he's also spent more on influencer marketing than any other person in this world. I think he's spent somewhere like $60 million. And he's worked with the biggest names, Shaq, Kim Kardashian, I mean, anyone you could possibly imagine, Mike Tyson, um, I, the, the list goes on. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do it any justice. Um, yeah, Schwartz there to the Stallone. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just anyone you know, and everyone, anyone and everyone. And I think he has, he has stories, like if you notice, right, at the Aspire tour, he gave a speech to encourage people to post on social media. Right. And gave some anecdotes about a 93 year old versus a 15 year old posting what they would post about and what their cadence should look like and overcoming the nervousness and uh, of posting and being open and curious and uh, mindful and, um, um, you know, and, and courageous about posting and how that could lead to the virality of certain videos that you post. But that was his speech at Aspire. Now, if you contextualize that with the speech that he gave at the 100 Million Mastermind, which was also hosted in Miami, but it was at the Bentley Tower Project um, in, remind me that area? Sunny Isles Beach. Sunny Isles Beach. So it's right next door to the Porsche Design Building. Yeah. What, with, what a crazy, crazy development. Yeah. It, right? I mean, the event was mind-blowing. And I know these events are planned by this master planner. Her name's Shannon. But... Um, the event went off like, I mean, without a hitch. I mean, it was, it was absolutely amazing. The value that was extracted. And again, it's unfair because it's apples to oranges. You have one Aspire event with 3000 people and maybe there was a hundred people at Dan's event. Um, just the value that you got, like Dan's speech at Aspire was very like inspirational. And, um, but, but the speech that he gave and it seemed very extemporaneous. It didn't, I mean, there was no, like, he didn't have cue cards and he wasn't reading off of a screen, but again, that was not also, no, that was also a 40 minute speech, but it was like tactical and strategic. And it was like, um, you know, it was, it was quantitative. I mean, there was so much data that he was throwing out again. Yeah. And Dan was able to lift the curtain a little bit on how he transforms his social media persona and his personal brand into what I would call a mini shark tank. Yes. And everyone knows about shark tank, right? It's a, it's a world famous TV show where just a handful of really wealthy people get to interview small business owners or entrepreneurs and figure out if they want to invest a little bit of money in their business. But imagine if they built a community of these entrepreneurs and spend time with them, coach them, and gave them the opportunity to spend time with each other. And that's essentially what Dan's figured out how to do. So without cameras. Right. So I ask you, right? You asked me would I invest in a in a in a you know sort of a rolling convention, if you will. Knowing what I know, the answer is no, because it's too difficult to monetize the seats and the butts. Somebody's gonna figure it out. Aspire will figure it out. But and maybe they have, I don't know, but would you invest a hundred thousand dollars, right? I mean, you already have, but I'm just saying that like you as someone who is, let's say, you know, sort of hypothetically not part of Dan's inner circle, 
would you invest $100,000 in Dan's 100 million mastermind? And more importantly, knowing what you know from being inside this sort of incubator, right? Which you call like a mini uh, shark tank. Could you extract value? Meaning that you spent a hundred grand, can you get your hundred grand back and more? Yeah, I think what you see there is that, and I think this is more important, you would invest a hundred thousand dollars in Dan. Right. In 10, 10 seconds. And, yeah. it, and, and 10 seconds is way too long, yeah. right? In, in a fraction of a second. Yeah. Right. Because you're betting on the jockey, not the horse. Yeah. And you can tell by spending just a few hours watching him control the hundred million mastermind right. and interact with all of these personalities from any industry you can imagine. Um, some of these folks have a hundred million views on social media. Some of them have a hundred million in revenue um, and a lot of stuff in between as well. And you can see the value that he adds to every single person in an individual way. And that's why they want him along with the elevator syndicate to invest in their business. Yeah. I think, like you said, it's an amazing incubator for businesses that are, again, not startups, but for businesses that are yeah, maybe- Definitely not startups. Right. right. But if He's you're, very clear about that. But if you're at, let's say, 20 million in revenue and you're trying to figure out a way to scale, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know of a better community. Everyone talks about the difference between a personal brand and a community. A personal brand is when you're- Investing in yourself, promoting your skill set, your journey, your history, your CV, right? Your resume. And you're putting it out there into the ether in hopes that people will develop this emotional attachment with who you are and your journey, see so much of themselves in you, and then start investing in you, both in terms of the time they spend engaged with your content, but also in buying your programs and your product offerings, maybe your personal coaching. Now we're moving more towards, I think the, the scales are tipping more towards building a community. And the community that Dan has built of like-minded entrepreneurs are looking to build and scale their enterprise from a six, seven figure business to eight, nine and beyond. There is no better incubator. Join now. Clip that up for spent, uh, Uncle Lev, clip that up <laughs> clip for me. Up. Send that to Dan, please. We spent some time with an entrepreneur. I forget his name, but he owned a company called Skinny Pasta. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you remember his name? I do remember his name. Absolutely. His name is, I've got it in my cell phone, uh, Brian Guadagno. Some Italian last name. So Brian I apologize, Skinny Brian. Pasta Sorry. is a eight-figure entrepreneur at this point. Mm-hmm. And he has received an investment from Elevator Syndicate. Right. And for us doubting Mustafa's, we wonder well, what what in the world is a guy doing who's an investment banker developing a consumer brand? What's he doing taking money from Elevator Syndicate? Why isn't he doing this? Why isn't he doing that? Why isn't he working with uh, large investment firms, venture capitalists, etc.? Seems like a sharp dude. And we got a very concise answer that makes a lot of sense. Brian explained very simply that venture capitalists want to destroy you. Yeah. When you take money from them, they see you as a binary option. It's a zero or one. Either you're going to a billion dollars and making them hundreds of millions, or they want you to blow up as quickly as possible and lose all the money that they gave you. And if you're an entrepreneur, does this sound like a sexy option to you? <laughs> it doesn't to me. Yeah. And so you have to find investors who would be happy with a 2x, a 3x, a 4x exit. They don't need a 10 to 100x to feel like they've satisfied their investment objectives. Yeah. And Dan, in his infinite intelligence, has figured out that the VC's inability to satisfy this market niche opens a huge gap for him to enter and work with entrepreneurs that are going to be successful, just maybe not in the way that these venture capitalists want. Yeah. I think it's like any smart business owner, they're looking at a market and they're looking at the market inefficiencies and they're wondering where they can insert themselves, right? You have angel investors, right? That are focusing on pre-revenue businesses. And then you've got, you know, venture capitalists, right? That are looking at blowing up a business and getting a hundred X return. But there's a huge gap that sits in between angel and VC 
And I think Dan recognized that again, inserted him and, you know, developed this elevator syndicate. And I think it's thriving as a result. There are so many businesses that we know you'll come across them. You're like, well, where'd you receive funding? They're like, oh, I used elevator syndicate. You're like, what? How did this whole thing come about? How did this exist without being on our radar? Dean and I, from our 20 year, 25 years of experience in finance, we focus mostly on, on debt um, and not on the equity side. But I think knowing what we know now and obviously getting to know Dan, um, there, were, there were so many speakers at the 100 million mastermind where you're like, I want to invest in this. I want to invest in skinny pasta. I want to invest in, you know, X, Y, Z brand. There was a guy. Repeat that, MD. Yeah. I was just going to say there was a guy with yeah. an app that focuses on plastic surgeons and med spas, right? Where as a consumer, the more products and services you buy, the more rewards you get. And then you can use those rewards, you know, um, to do X, Y, and Z. And he has like this mass adoption. Yeah. Imagine a med spa is open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And those are the only hours they make money. And with repeat MD, these guys are making money 24 hours a day now. Yeah. And I think that's the procedures that cost three to $6,000. Listen, it's incredible. A wise man has said, right. A good businessman makes money during his office hours and a great businessman makes money at all hours. Yeah. Shout out to Phil Sitter, repeat MD. Yeah. Well, listen, we talked about Aspire. We contrasted with 100 Million Mastermind. I think both are phenomenal events, but I think knowing what we know now, right? Having a high ticket program like Dan has, where you have to spend $100,000 to be a member of this community, even with just having 100 members, right? What a phenomenal event. What an amazing, I think it was a two day event because the second day obviously was on a yacht. Um, but what an amazing event where you can not only hear founders' stories, which I think helps so much with like just sort of, you know, sort of hearing somebody else's story and hearing that it's not different than yours puts you at ease with all that you had to conquer, you know, had to conquer uh, in order to get where you are. Yeah. They um, just want to know they're not alone. Right. And then being able to network with people, right? And it's it's finding that adjacent business to yours that isn't a threat, right? But but is an ally, is a st- strategic partner. Um, and then lastly, being able to invest in those businesses. I think those were the three aspects that I got from the 100 Million Mastermind, which I didn't necessarily get from the Aspire uh, tour event because I'm just, you know, I'm again, I'm not in real estate um, or that type of real estate to where it was... Um, where tactically and strategically it could help me more, more so I thought the Aspire Tour is like a dopamine f- like fest. It was just constantly like hit the button more, 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 more. It was aspirational. It was, you know, emotional. Um, so it tugged on the heartstrings of, I think like my, my ethos, right. Who I am, my being, whereas Aspire was just like, Let's network, let's shake hands, let's tell war stories. What do you do? What do I do? How can we work together? And I think being a businessman, I think that just serves my purpose. Yeah. Aspire is a wonderful entertainment venue. And the 100 Million Mastermind was a way to elevate yourself and be around like-minded people in a way that you simply can't do otherwise. Yeah. So again, if you want more information about the 100 million mastermind, go to, I think, 100 million mastermind or 100M. No, 100 million mastermind.com, I think is the URL. They're also on Instagram at 100 million mastermind. Of course, you can go to at Dan Fleischman. There are still two left this year. There are, yeah. Yeah. So don't miss that. That is the end of this episode of Behind the Business. Thanks for sticking around. And of course, um, for those business owners that are looking to grow and scale their community, um, go to jointhefraternity.com. It's a network. It's a community of six, seven, eight figure entrepreneurs that want to scale their business to nine figures and beyond. It's an online coaching platform. It's a way to network with other like-minded entrepreneurs that are really looking to access um, strategic vendors and um, st- you know strategic and adjacent businesses to theirs in order to grow and scale their business. Uh, we do one Zoom call every week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's $197 a month to join. It's an amazing offer. And like Warren Buffett always says, the price is what you pay. The value is what you get. We'll see you guys next time. Adios.